When I came to Capitol Reef to work as a ranger when I was 24 years old, I just bonded with this place. The Slick Rock Country makes me feel more alive and more joyful than any other landscape in the world. We are placed in the landscape in our homes. And for me, my hometown, my home landscape, is really these, these canyons, the canyon country. You know, there are a lot of other places I love, but it's the landscape that is around Tori that makes me feel most connected to life. And that makes it my hometown. You know, it's really hard to remember that not everyone has had the same experiences that we've had living in Utah. Not everyone knows what it feels like to go out into the Great Basin and be surrounded by what feels like endless space and silence, or to walk down a canyon that feels friendly to us and not be threatened by all that rock, which is the way people might feel if they're coming from green places. And so my job as a writer is to remind myself that I may be writing for someone who hasn't had these experiences and just do my very best to bring it alive. And I think you do that through senses, through your sensory language, trying to really recreate the place in words that, that makes it feel to the reader the way it felt to us. I had an assignment to photograph for a travel story that took me up to Snow Basin for the first time, beloved to the local folks in Ogden and Ogden Valley. And as I followed the writer around who was doing interviews for this piece and taking pictures, I realized there was really an interesting story there. And I just kept working on the book, trying to figure out, okay, what is the story? Almost every answer would also include the name Earl Holding, who was the man who owned Snow Basin. And as I learned more about Earl Holding, I learned that he was immensely powerful. He owned Snow Basin Ski Area, Sun Valley Ski Area, 500,000 acres of land in the West, Sinclair Oil. And he had been involved in a very controversial land exchange to privatize the land at the base of the mountain at Snow Basin. And my book began to shift into trying to understand how power works in the West, in the Western mountains, and how we make decisions together as a community about lands we love. And in the middle of all that, my wife and I found a piece of land here in Torrey, fell in love with it, purchased it, and in order to make that work, we split the land in two. We sold off an existing home on a few acres to make it financially feasible for us to, to have the land at all. And I became a land developer too, on a very tiny scale. And so the book really plays with the ironies and tension between Earl Holding, who owns 500,000 acres and pretty much always gets what he wants, and Steve Trimble, who is now a land developer of all things, in Torrey, this land just outside Capitol Reef that has become my spiritual home over the years. The West is a different place. You know, the West, in, if, when you live in the West, you often live in a city that's at the base of mountains. And those mountains are a hovering presence in your life. That doesn't happen in the Great Plains where you have a relationship with the sky and in New England, you have a relationship with the woods. And the woods are enclosing and sheltering, and it's a really different experience with, with wild country or wildness or nature, or whatever it is you want to call the earth. But in the West, it's the land that you really live with. There's a very different sense of landscape that has a lot to do with scale and space as well. You know, I feel claustrophobic in those green tunnels that go from village to village in New England and I feel exhilarated when I come back to the space of the West.